report to the branch, you say we're writing in reply to another letter, and uh, you say I investigated the matter further with the other elder, and then you set out some aspects of the investigation in the first paragraph. And then in the second paragraph, you say we also spoke to other brothers and sisters in the congregation who knew about the matter through another sister who had spread the story after being told about it. And uh, you go on dealing with that about other people knowing. And then if we go to the next paragraph, you say that after interviewing the brothers and sisters and reviewing the scriptures, and you identify them, we felt that uncleanness had been committed on several occasions, but it was not loose conduct. And uh, we felt that Brother Neil could not speak with confidence, um, and so on. You see, you, you don't identify in that letter at all what the actual allegations were. Well, that's true, yes. In hindsight, I'd say that uh, uh, we should have done that, and we, yeah. You see, both um, Mr. Hawley and BCB uh, say that there were also allegations made with regard to uh, tongue kissing uh, in the meeting that, that you were at. And I take it you, you don't contest that, you just say you don't remember it. I don't remember it. I didn't think it was, but I don't remember. And so what was the uncleanness that you identify in that letter? Well, the matter of the um, Bill Neal watching her in the shower and uh, the touching of the breast. Now, this report to the branch, is, is that a, a requirement that you report to the branch when uh, an elder is... Uh, removed or deleted from being an elder? Yes, yes, because the appointments back then came through uh, the branch. The appointments of elders? And recommendation deletions, yes. And that's still the case, though, isn't it? Uh, uh, yes, it is. Yes. Yeah. And you say there that unfortunately there may be worldly people who also know, but we are not sure. In respect of people knowing, why is it that you drew the distinction between worldly people and people within the congregation? What's the relevance of that? It was mainly just to show how far he had got and therefore his qualifications, how far the, the information ha about Bill Neal uh, had got, not just in the congregation but was outside, and therefore his qualifications came into question because of that and because of one's in the congregation and because of what actually happened. And was the disqualification because he couldn't be trusted with young girls? Um, well, in this particular case, yes. Uh, well, that isn't what you say in the letter. The disqualification is, is that uh, he couldn't speak for you. You didn't have freedom oh, of well, speech. Sorry, yes. Well, that's different, isn't it? Yes. You were concerned that he couldn't speak uh, with authority in the congregation because of how people in the congregation might view him? Yes, yes. Yeah. So the wording, you know, again, uh, would be something that we I would consider different. Mr Jackson, uh, <coughs> the letter refers to you feeling that uncleanness had been committed, but not loose conduct. Now, what's the difference? Uncleanness in the sense of what they actually did, or he did, I should say. Uh, loose conduct it's, is where it's actual intercourse, um, uh, other inappropriate things that, that could happen. So that's referred to as loose conduct. Well, also in the Bible as immorality, pornea. Um, but where does the expression loose conduct come from? Is that a Jehovah's Witness expression? I oh, know. I just in that reference material. Um, yeah, I'm not sure if it's in there, but I, I would say that. Uh, 
it's an expression that uh, is mentioned in the Bible. Just offhand, I can't remember the scripture, but also to the publications have explained it and even going into more detail in later uh, publications, just explaining it. If a man deliberately touched the breast of a girl, how would that be classified? Deliberately? Yes. Uh, I would say as uncleanness. Yeah. And if a man deliberately touched the breast of a girl on more than one occasion, how would that be described? Well, you, you're getting into the area of loose conduct. Well, in this letter you say that uncleanness had been committed on several occasions. See that? Yes. Now, one can understand an accident. But yes. It's different, isn't it, if you've got several occasions? Yes. Yes, that's why I say with the wording of it, I would probably word it as different. Well, if you've got several occasions, you're into the area of finding deliberate conduct, don't you? Mm. Mm. Well, does that suggest that the way you classified these events, even on your limited reference to them, was wrong? At the time, I would say that I felt that it was, or we felt that it was uh, correct, but I can also see what you're saying now, and also too with uh, you know, additional information that we've received over the years that uh, it certainly could be classified as different. We'll leave aside the different information over the years, just looking back on what yes. you knew then, as you recall. Yes. Is the letter correct? Well, as I said, it's correct in the sense that we, with our understanding there, but as you're saying, as I mentioned several occasions, uh, then it would come under the, the field of loose conduct. Well, it's not my record. No, 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 it's no, your, no. It's no. your words. Yes, I know. Well, is the letter wrong? Well, I'd say the wording, yes. Yeah. Now, it might be suggested that the letter's been written in a way which is favourable to Brother Neil, and more favourable than in fact the facts that you knew, knew meant it should have been. Uh, because of that comment or...? Yeah. Because of the finding. Yes, although we did, I did mention there, I just noticed in the last sentence, he's been given strong counsel and we feel that no further action or restrictions are needed. So what we actually discussed with him from the Bible or the publications, I'm not sure, I can't remember. But I can't see how we showed him particular favour. Well, I think we've agreed that the yes. facts that you had in, uh, fell into the category of loose conduct. Yes. But you didn't make that more serious finding. You'd left it an uncleanness. Yes. Isn't yes. that favourable to him? Well, in, again, looking at it, you could say yes, that uh, possibly is the case. Uh, but again, just the wording of it, would, I would have certainly done it different uh, in thinking about it now. Well, again, I might be suggested that you fell into this form of finding and form of words because you were favourably disposed to Brother Neil, you see? I don't think we, I was or we were, but by the wording of it, yes, I can see what you're saying, yeah, my Lord. You see, Mr Jackson, there was only one Shah incident that was, or looking over the Shah incident that was complained of, wasn't there? I thought that was the situation, yes. But there were many instances over a long period of time of uh, tongue kissing. Well, I was unaware of that. I did not know. Because um, um, by using the word several occasions, it seems that this may be a reference actually to the several occasions of tongue kissing. Yes. Yes. Uh, I cannot say with confidence, uh, but it could have been. 
but I just cannot recall that that was uh, raised. Now, the, the classification of these different um, sins or severity of sinning uh, at that time was, as set out in Pay Attention to Ourselves and to All the Flock, is that right? That was published in 1991, is that right? I think it was, yes. And that's um, at tab 80. Perhaps we can look at ringtail 24, page 92 of the document. See there under that heading, Uphold Jehovah's Righteousness, the second bold paragraph says, The scriptures clearly show that Jehovah forbids certain conduct among his clean people. Brothers need to uphold Jehovah's righteous standards regarding the following. And then it sets out various um, categories of transgression. You see that the first is manslaughter. Yes. And then we'll scroll down. And then there's sexual misconduct including adultery, fornication, and other forms of pornea. And then under that, you'll see there are three yes. uh, subcategories. The first one, you just scroll up again slightly, is uncleanness. Includes an intentional momentary touching of sexual parts or caressing of breasts. Yes. And then if we scroll down... And then loose conduct is a shocking, flagrant disregard for Jehovah's moral standards. Yes. And some examples are set out. Yes. And then thirdly, pornea involves immoral use of the genitals of at least one human. Yes. And then it goes on and sets out examples. So that was the classification you were seeking to employ, is that right? Yes, yes. Do you know the origins, Mr. Jackson, of this word, pornea? Um, just scripturally, uh, from the Greek, deals with, uh, as it mentions there, uh, pornea involves immoral use of the genitals, genitals of at least one human. Uh, so it involves... Uh, fornication uh, and other forms of uh, immorality. Also including there uh, oral sex, uh, anal sex and mutual masturb masturbation. So the word itself that you say is Greek origins. It's a Greek origin. Now, going back to your letter at tab 70. Uh, at the top of the second page. Um, you'll see in the last sentence of that paragraph, you write, Also, brothers, I would recommend that once this has died down, and it appears that Brother Neil again has the freedom of speech, that he be recommended as an elder again, so that he can be of help in the congregation, as he has done in the past. Now, what does freedom of speech there mean to you as you employed it? Well, um, freedom of speech is just over a period of time if uh, those that knew about it no longer see it themselves as something that is uh, a terrible thing that disqualifies him as an elder. But looking at that now, um, I certainly would rewrite that area uh, because even now, uh, you know, one wouldn't be recommended without first of all considering uh, the amount of time or years that that had happened, if at all, that he'd be recommended as an elder or ministerial servant. So you say that 
the time period should have to be considered. Now? Yes. Yes, and even then, it wasn't just something that was done within six months, but normally it would take a period of time. Uh, one of our publications said, uh, I think the wording, uh, many years or... And even back then it was recommended that it would be several years to live down that um, sin that had happened. Because it's a reputational issue. Yeah. It's about Brother Neil's efficacy or potential efficacy as an elder. Uh, yes, yes. And the moral authority that he might have in the congregation. Yes. And but even, yes, even too, taking into consideration um, that of dealing with the young people, would he be able to do that again? And, you know, with our recent letters that we've had, it certainly shows that uh, he wouldn't be quickly recommended, if ever. But uh, at the time that you considered what the proper course was in relation to BCB uh, or BCB's complaints, there was no consideration then about his potential reoffending. Uh, no, not no. Well, shouldn't there have been? Do uh, you mean for him that we warned him? Well, no, not that you warned him. That oh, sorry. You, that you took steps to protect children in the congregation to ensure that he wouldn't offend against them. Oh yes, yes, yes. Um, I just can't recall what we said to him or what happened. Uh, but we would have taken steps, um, yeah, that he, don't, that he wouldn't get into that situation again. Well, insofar as in being reappointed as an elder sometime in the future, your recorded concern here is about his reputation. Once this matter has died down, you accept that? Yeah, and as I say, in hindsight, I definitely wouldn't have said that back then. Your what you didn't consider is whether, over a passage of time, he could be considered to be safe and trustworthy with children. Yes, yes. And that would certainly have been something now that I would definitely put in a letter. And, and you should have considered it then. Yes, sister. yes. Yes. Now, Mr Jackson, did you consider at all when those complaints were made that the conduct complained of may have amounted to a criminal offence? Uh, no, I did not, no. Did you consider at all reporting the matter to the police? Uh, no, uh, I did not. Did you consider at all encouraging BCB to report the matter to the police? I am not sure if we recommended that to her. Um, as far as I'm aware, all we did was to have those meetings and to write that letter. If the branch wanted that further to happen, I guess they would have written to Max Hawley on it. Um, but I just cannot recall whether we did uh, talk to her about that or whether, um, yeah, I'm just not sure. In your considerable time and experience as an elder and as a uh, circuit and then district overseer, has there ever been a case where you have reported wrongdoing that may have constituted a criminal offence to the police? Uh, not that I'm aware because I never really got involved with uh, um, those cases at all. So. You say you were never involved in a case where, within your responsibilities in the church, where the wrongdoing that was complained of was such that it may have constituted a criminal offence. Offhand, I, I cannot recall any situation. Other than the case of BCB, of course. Yes, yes. What is your understanding of when matters should be reported to the police by elders or overseers and when not? I think the procedure now is that we ring the branch 
and we tell the person and the legal department and we tell the one involved uh, about reporting it to the police. Um, I think every state has been different as regards to when this was implemented, I'm not sure. Um, but uh, that's what we've encouraged in the publications. But if there's no legal obligation to report, then the practice is to not report. Is that how you understand? Uh, for sexual abuse, do you mean? For any crime. Oh, no, no, abuse. no. We, uh, we'd certainly recommend if a crime has been committed, that it be reported to the police. Well, what about a, uh, a crime of sexual abuse? You seem to treat that differently. And you mean, first of all, ringing the branch and asking for... Well, whether it should be reported. I think we have direction that it should be reported. If there's a legal obligation to yes. report. Yes. And this is not a legal obligation. Yeah, Dr. Jason Morrison, Theologist again. I just want to say thank you for watching the videos and I uh, hope you got plenty of uh, self-rediscovery and freedom out of it. If you watched it on YouTube, please share or like. Um, maybe even comment. If you watched it on Facebook, like, comment, share. Um, but most of all, get out and live. This isn't a rehearsal. You've got a one-off life. Don't let your loyalty and your faithfulness blind you to the life that you should be experiencing. Till the next video, thank you for watching and bye for now.